from 55 to 70 on my Joomla site? How's that possible? <laughs> In today's tutorial, we're going to look at a great little extension called JimCDN from Core PHP that can really speed up your website. Will you go from 55 to 70? No. But you'll probably go from about 65 to maybe 75 or 80 on any number of tests, including the Google Page Speed test. So let's dive in. There are a number of things you're going to need for this tutorial. And first and foremost are some ways to gauge the performance of your site. One of my favorites is Google PageSpeed, and to get that, it's pretty simple. Just head on over to Google. You can just Google PageSpeed if you want, and this is uh, a Firefox Firebug extension. So you're going to need both of those as well. Firefox, of course, the preferred browser. Firebug, if you've taken any of our beginner courses or intermediate courses, you'll already have installed Firebug. If you don't have that, just go to Tools, uh, Add-ons, and then search for Firebug, and it'll pop right up. Add it into your Firefox. It's really simple to do. And if you do any web design or checking up on your site at all with your template, eh, Firebug is really important. So go ahead and get that. So that's number one. Number two, then, would be page speed for Firebug. And to get this extension, you just click on the icon there and install page speed 1.9. You should install while using Firefox, and all of the platforms are supported. Once that's downloaded and installed, you'll restart Firefox, and when you click on Firebug, you'll have a new tab called PageSpeed. You can analyze the performance of any website in the world just by clicking Analyze Performance, and Google gets a ranking of 87 out of 100. That's pretty good. There are a number of other tools, including YSlow, another tool for Firebug from Yahoo. And you can get more than one. I prefer to stick with just one. Just kind of keeps everything consistent for me. But if you're really serious about speeding up your website, you might want to get both just to see what both have to say, because both of them will offer a number of clues as to how you can speed up your website. All right, step number one was Firebug. Step number two was Google Page Speed. And once you've got those two installed, it's time to head over to Core PHP's website and go to their product page for Joom CDN listed below in the session notes. This extension is $30. This is a subscription-based program, and once your year runs out, you won't be getting any updates, but you're still free to use the extension as it is. For $30, this can be a big plus for your website. So, step number three, purchase JimCDN. Once you've purchased JimCDN and downloaded the files, of course, the next step is to install them. You install JimCDN like any other extension. JimCDN comes as a plugin. Once it's installed, we'll receive this full description page. Let's go over and take a look at the plugin and see what we need. The plugin is installed but not enabled, which is good because we have, haven't filled in any, any of the information. And you'll notice that the full description is here right in the plugin as well. So the next step then is to go and get an Amazon S3 account. Amazon S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. It's an incredibly inexpensive way to store just about anything online. I use it for storing the videos for my personal websites as well as a number of my clients, and it's fantastically inexpensive. It's a really great tool from Amazon. If you don't have an account, you'll need to sign up for one, putting in an email address and clicking I'm a new user to sign up for the service. You'll put in your name, your email address, you'll type it in again, hit password, and then once the registration is complete, you'll enter in your credit card information. It's pretty simple. So once you've signed up, go ahead and click on that Sign In, and you'll see all the buckets that you have. At this point, I would assume you have none. I have a few, simply because this is the account I use for my personal stuff and some of my client stuff. All right, so that's step number four. Step number five is the Amazon CloudFront. 
Amazon CloudFront is a concept whereby Amazon stores your S3 server files in different areas around the globe in their cloud. This is the most simple way to explain it. So that when a user from, say, Canada tries to load your website, the cloud servers that are closest to him or her will load the files. That person will get the files from the closest cloud server available to them. So instead of, say, getting your files from Dallas, Texas, they might get them from Toronto, Ontario, which would theoretically speed up your site. This isn't a necessary step for JoomCDN to work, but you know what? It's very inexpensive, and it's probably worth doing. If you notice, the first 10 terabytes per month are 15 cents a gig. That's not a lot. So CloudFront pricing is really, really inexpensive. To sign up for Amazon CloudFront, again, just click on the Sign Up button, and you'll be able to sign up with your current account information. All right, so let's go back over because we're going to need our Amazon Access Key, our Amazon S3 Secret Key. Does Amazon S3 use SSL? Now, this is important. If you're bringing anything from the Amazon S3 server into a secure page, you need to change that to yes. The bucket name and the CloudFront domain name. So those are the things we're going to go look for. Log into your Amazon Web Services account and click on Security Credentials. You'll be able to set up new credentials or get the ones that you've already set up. The nice thing with Amazon is that I can create and make inactive any access key ID I want as we go. So I don't have a problem showing you this today. So I just click and copy that, paste it into my access key. I need my secret key. And I paste that in there. Uh, I won't be using this on, on a secure page, so I can leave it like that. My bucket name, if I come back over. Now, you may not have any buckets yet, but they're really simple to do. If I go over and sign into my management console, make sure I'm on my S3 tab. I'm going to ahead and create a new bucket for this. I call this Joomla Fun Pit, and I'm going to create that bucket. Now the bucket Joomla Fun Pit is empty. I'm going to come back over to my OS training Joomla Fun Pit, and now I have my bucket name. Now down here, just before we get into the CloudFront, down here you'll notice in the instructions, setting up the CloudFront is pretty simple as well. Once you've enabled CloudFront on your account, you need to create a distribution from the CloudFront Management Console. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create a new distribution. I'm going to download, because that's what the CDN asked me for, Joomla Fun Pit. I'm going to leave logging off. They recommend not setting up a CNAME at this point. And I'm going to click Create. JoomlaFunPit.S3.AmazonAWS.com is the origin bucket. Amazon sets all this up for me. And here is my CloudFrontNet.net name, because that's my new domain name. And paste that into my CloudFront domain name. The last step in setting this up is the cron job URL. I have to run a cron job at least once a day for this to run. Now you'll notice in my advanced parameters, the plugin automatically puts a name in. I can leave that the way it is, and that's fine. Delete all cache files, no. Brute force the file path, yes. And add expiration time, no. And just basically leave this as it comes. I want to make note of this link so I can set up my cron job. And that's it. We're ready to go. Click Save. The last step in this process is to set up the cron job. Now, depending on your ISP, that's going to be different, but I use HostGator, so let's go ahead and do that. For me at HostGator, down at the bottom here, cron jobs, and I'm basically just going to set this up at uh, once a day, and paste in the URL that they gave me. You'll notice it's ntihost.net slash Joomla. This is where I'm running my tutorial site from, CDN run cron. 
add new cron job. And you'll notice here, I have a cron job ready to go. When that runs, all of the static files and CSS and some JavaScript will be loaded to Amazon servers, and I should see a pretty good jump in speed on my website. So before that happens, let's go and do a quick test. Page speed right now, 71 out of 100. That's actually not too bad, mostly due to a great template from OSTraining.com, but you'll notice a number of issues here. Once Jim CDN has done its thing, we should see a better page speed score. All right, just as a quick reminder, our CloudFront is there, and that's been put into our Joom CDN configuration. Now that our cron job is run, let's just take a peek and take a look at all the files that have been uploaded to our new bucket. Click on Joomla Fun Pit, and you'll notice components, images, media, and templates. All of these files have been uploaded to our bucket called Joomla Fun Pit, ready to be accessed from anywhere in the world via our CDN and CloudFront bucket. Are you ready? Let's see what kind of results we got. You might recall that our previous score was a 71. Let's hit refresh. Make sure all of the files are loading from the right place. If you notice down at the bottom, you saw the S3 server files being loaded. And run our page speed test. Refresh analysis we've gone from a 71 to an 84 out of 100. Now you'll notice a few things that Google shows us that could be improved. With Joomla, none of these are really going to be that helpful. You really can't combine system style sheets and print and template style sheets, although you could combine the K2 CSS and the template CSS for a little bit of gain, but it would be so marginal, probably not worth doing, especially if K2 doesn't update. Combining external JavaScript is, again, unless you know what you're doing, not advisable. And specifying these image dimensions, these are referenced by the core files in Joomla. And you're not going to update those just for the minimal gains that you're going to get here, because then you'll break it when you do an update. There are three cautionary things here that Google gives some a heads up on. And you can look at those uh, for your own site, because the messages will be completely different. Again. Just remember that with a Joomla site, some of these things are difficult to do, if not impossible and unproductive to do. You really need to think that through before you go ahead and do any of those suggestions. But bottom line, from a 71 to an 84 is an exciting speed difference, no matter which way you look at it. And that's Joomla CDN.